Hello, English learners, and welcome to English Pod. My name is Marco. I'm Amira, and Amira and I are here today with a great, great lesson for you. Yes, we are. Today we're going to be talking about a restaurant. Amira, why don't you give us a little bit more details? Well, we're talking about a situation in a restaurant, and two people are involved: the waiter and the customer. And I don't want to say any more. Okay, don't say any more. Let's just listen to this dialogue, and we'll be back later to explain it. Good evening. My name is Fabio. I'll be your waiter for tonight. May I take your order? No, I'm still working on it. This menu is not even in English. What's good here? For you, sir, I would recommend spaghetti and meatballs. Does it come with coke and fries? It comes with either soup or salad and a complimentary glass of wine, sir. Uh, I'll go with the spaghetti and meatballs, salad and the wine. Excellent choice. Your order will be ready soon. How soon is soon? Twenty minutes. You know what? I'll just go grab a burger across the street. Ma va un po', metti in questo locale, mi fai tutte queste domande ancora. Ma va va pigliato. Uh oh, what a waiter. <laughs> what a waiter. He is really angry at this customer and I can't blame him. I would be angry too. Yeah. So, I think Marco, you have chosen some interesting expressions for us here. What is the first one? Well, the first one is I'm still working on it. 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 Why don't we listen to some other examples on how you can use this word and then we'll come back and explain it. Did you finish reading the magazine? I'm still working on it. Did you fix my car? I'm still working on it. So, you could say, I'm still working on it, means... I still need more time. Fantastic. Great. Okay, it's clear. I have another one for you guys. It's a phrase commonly used, and you'll hear it all the time. Coke and fries. 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 It's a short way of saying Coca-Cola and French fries. So that's basically America's fast food. Yeah, burger, coke, and fries. Okay. <laughs> What's next on the menu? On the menu, we have a complimentary glass of wine. Complimentary glass of wine. Complimentary glass of wine. Complimentary means that it's free. Free. Yes. We love that, huh? Yeah, we definitely like free things. Well, um, I have another one for us here, another interesting phrase. I'll go with. I'll go with. I'll go with. I'll go with. So basically, it's another way of saying I'm choosing. Yeah, I'll choose or I'll take. I'll take. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. All right, the next word that I want to take a look at is grab. 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 Okay, now let's listen to some other examples of how we could use grab in different situations And then we'll come back and explain it. On your way home, can you grab some milk? Wait for me, please. I need to grab my coat. Let's grab a cup of coffee. All right. Well, I would understand that go grab means go get quickly. To go get quickly, yeah. Yeah. All right, everyone. So now it's time to listen one more time to the dialogue and listen carefully and try to understand why the waiter doesn't like the customer. Let's listen. Good evening. My name is Fabio. I'll be your waiter for tonight. May I take your order? No, I'm still working on it. This menu is not even in English. What's good here? 
For you, sir, I would recommend spaghetti and meatballs. Does it come with Coke and fries? It comes with either soup or salad and a complimentary glass of wine, sir. Uh, I'll go with the spaghetti and meatballs, salad and the wine. Excellent choice. Your order will be ready soon. How soon is soon? 20 minutes. You know what? I'll just go grab a burger across the street. Ma va un po', metti in questo locale, mi fai tutte queste domande ancora? Ma va, va, pigliarti. Marco, why did this waiter get angry at the customer? Well, he basically wasted the waiter's time. I mean, this guy comes into the restaurant, he is not very polite, and he's asking all these questions, and in the end he just gets up and says, ah, I'll just go grab a burger across the street. Yeah, and I also think that this guy was a lot more casual than the place he was in, right? Yeah, yeah, I think this was a nice, uh, fancy restaurant, so I think he was in the wrong place. Yeah. So how many times, Marco, tell me, do you really have fast food a week? Fast food, let's see, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, no, I'm oh just kidding. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, um, I think I get fast food maybe once a week, once or twice a week. All right, talking about fast food made me hungry, so I think I'm going to go grab something to eat myself. Yeah, me too. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed the lesson today, and remember that all of this vocabulary is useful for your everyday needs. Yes, well, actually here in English podcast, we focus on phrases and words that are high frequency and that means that you can use them every day in your practical life exactly and be sure to go to our website at englishpod.com where you can find many other resources and you can leave your questions and comments at our community forum so thank you very much for listening we'll be back tomorrow with another great lesson for you so until then bye bye The English Pod Audio Review. Listen to the meaning, then say the vocabulary word. Not yet completed. Need more time. Still working on. Suggest. Would recommend. Free. Complimentary. To choose. Pick. Go with. To get quickly. Grab. Let's try that faster. Not yet completed. Need more time. Still working on. To get quickly. Grab. Suggest. Would recommend. To get quickly. Grab. To choose. Pick. Go with. Now say the word and hear it in a sentence. Still working on. Have you decided what to do tonight? I'm still working on it. Complimentary. Would you like a complimentary dessert? Go with. I'll go with the red dress instead of the blue one. Grab. Let's grab some beers after work. Go with. I'll go with the red dress instead of the blue one. Grab. Let's grab some beers after work. Hello, English learners, and welcome to English Pod. My name is Marco. I'm Amira. Amira and I are here today with another interesting and useful lesson for you English learners. Amira, why don't you explain a little bit of what this lesson is about today? It's about calling in sick. Oh, okay. That's useful. Yes, definitely. It happens to everyone. Once in a while, you don't feel so well. 
um, or you feel well, but you don't want to go to work. <laughs> right. So you call in sick. So. Okay. Okay. Let's uh, listen to this dialogue. And I want everyone to keep their ears open and see if the boss believes this person. Let's listen. Hello, Daniel speaking. How may I help you? Hi, Daniel. Julie here. <coughs> <laughs> oh, hi, Julie. How are you? Actually, I'm feeling quite ill today. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. What's wrong? I, I think I'm coming down with the flu. I have a headache, uh, a sore throat, <clears throat> a runny nose, and I'm feeling slightly feverish. I see. So you're calling in sick. Yes. I was hoping to take the day off uh, to recover. Okay, then. Try and get some rest. Marco, do you think he believed her? No, I don't think he believed her. He didn't sound really convinced. Yes, and Julie didn't sound really sick, huh? Exactly. Right. Well, we have some really good vocabulary here. Amira, why don't you uh, begin with the first one? The first phrase I've chosen for you is a very, very useful one. I'm feeling quite ill today. I'm feeling quite ill today. I'm feeling quite ill today. All right, what does this mean exactly? It means that she's feeling sick. Oh, okay, that's clear. So she is sick. She's feeling sick. Okay, let's look at another really useful phrase. And this one is, I'm coming down with the flu. 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 All right, and this phrase means that I am starting to get the flu or I am getting the flu. Okay, the next phrase I have for you is calling in sick. Calling in sick. Calling in sick. Calling in sick. It means calling your boss to tell him that you can't come to work today. I personally love this phrase because it saves so much time and explanations. Okay, perfect. So if I say this, then everyone will know that I am not coming to work today. Yes, definitely. Perfect. All right. And the last phrase that we're going to take a look at today is, I was hoping to take the day off. 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 Right, and she says this to ask for permission because she does not want to go to work. Okay, now, couldn't she just say, like, I can't come today? Right, she could say, I can't come today, but that would be a little bit um, impolite. Okay, so when she says, I was hoping to take the day off, it's a polite way of asking. It's a polite way, exactly, because she is talking to her boss. Very good. So let's listen to the dialogue one more time. The dialogue is a little different this time. Listen carefully and see if you think the boss believes her this time. Hello, Daniel speaking. How may I help you? Hi, Daniel. Julie here. <coughs> <coughs> Oh, hi, Julie. How are you? Actually, I'm feeling quite ill today. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. What's wrong? I, I think I'm coming down with the flu. I have a headache, uh, a sore throat, <clears throat> a runny nose, and I'm feeling slightly feverish. I see. So, you're calling in sick? Yes. I was hoping to take the day off uh, to recover. Okay, then. Try and get some rest. Okay, guys, we're back, and I do think he believed her this time. Yeah, I think he was understanding when he said, um, okay, then try and get some rest. Yeah, and, and Julie sounded pretty sick. Yes, yes, she did. Yeah, it was, it was convincing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I almost called in sick last week. Really? Yeah, I wasn't feeling very well, and um, so I almost didn't come to work. Oh, that would have been really bad for me. I would have been stuck here without you, Marco. Yeah, you would have had to do the podcast all by yourself. Oh, no. Um, you know, actually, I had the same symptoms as Julie. I also had a headache 
and I had a sore throat. And also, the worst thing and the thing that I hate the most is I had a runny nose. Oh no, that's really bad because then you have to like blow your nose all the time and then it gets red and it hurts, right? Exactly, yeah. yeah. Luckily, I didn't have a fever though. No oh, fever. thank God. Yeah. So did you take some medicine and, and, and it just killed everything? Yeah, um, I had a friend and he had some uh, pills for the flu. And he just gave me a couple and I felt better in about two days. Oh, great. Well, so guys, let me tell you about a very funny thing that really happens in real life in Egypt. Uh, what story do you have for us today? Well, it's actually not a story. It's a fact. I mean, people in Egypt, when they're sick, they never call in sick themselves. They'll have someone do that for them. Oh, that's interesting. Why? Why do, why do they do this? Well, there is this weird speculation about, you know, if you can make it to the phone, you can make it to the office. <laughs> I agree. I agree. If I were a boss, I would do the same thing. Yeah. All right, listeners, we're out of time today, but be sure to visit our website at EnglishPod.com where you can see other lessons and also you can leave your questions and comments at our community forum. We hope you enjoyed our lesson and tomorrow we will be back with another fantastic lesson for you. But for now, it's bye. Bye. The English Pod Audio Review. Listen to the meaning, then say the vocabulary word. Polite offer to help. How may I help you? Very sick. Quite ill. Getting acquiring. Coming down. Report that you will not go to work because you are sick. Calling in sick. To kindly expect. Was hoping. A sign, indication. Symptom. Allow. Permission. Impolite. Day off because you're sick. Sick day. Make it into work. Let's try that faster. Day off because you're sick. Sick day. Make it into work. Impolite. Assign indication. Symptom. Allow. Permission. Polite offer to help. How may I help you? To kindly expect. Was hoping. Getting acquiring. Coming down. Very sick. Quite ill. Report that you will not go to work because you are sick. Calling in sick. Now say the word and hear it in a sentence. Sir, you look lost. May I help you? May I help you find something? I was wondering, may I help you prepare your report? Quite ill. I'm feeling quite ill today. I don't think I can go to work. Quite ill. Andy can't get out of bed today. He must be quite ill. Quite ill. The lesson was canceled because our teacher is quite ill. Coming down. You have a runny nose. Are you coming down with the flu? Coming down. 
I can feel that I'm coming down with the flu. Coming down. My throat hurts. I hope I'm not coming down with the flu. Our meeting was postponed because my client called in sick. If he calls in sick one more time, we'll fire him. I almost called in sick today. Was hoping. We were hoping to meet with you after lunch. Was hoping. I was hoping to borrow your car this weekend. Was hoping. They were hoping to find you at the bus station. Hello, English learners, and welcome to English Pod. My name is Marco. I'm Amira. Amira and I are here today with an interesting lesson about a hotel situation. Amira, why don't you give us a little bit more information? Well, the situation is taking place in a hotel, and someone is checking in and is obtaining an upgrade. An upgrade. Okay, that's an interesting word. Why don't we listen to the dialogue and then we'll come back and explain all this vocabulary. Good afternoon. What can I do for you? I'd like to check in, please. I have a reservation under the name Anthony Roberts. All right. Uh, Roberts. Oh, Mr. Roberts, we've been expecting you. And here is your key card to the presidential suite. But there must be some mistake. My reservation was for a standard room. Are you sure? Let me double check. Yeah, here, this is my confirmation number. You're right, Mr. Roberts. There seems to be a mix up. Unfortunately, we're overbooked at the moment. So. Uh, not to worry. We're pleased to offer you a, a complimentary upgrade. Woohoo! Presidential suite, baby! Okay, everyone. That is nice, huh? Yeah, the guy is really excited that he's going to get the presidential suite. Yes, there's some interesting phrases and vocabulary items here. And I know, Marco, you want to talk about some of them. Right. Um, the first one, and this is really useful for all of our listeners who travel a lot. This phrase will come in handy. And it is, I have a reservation under the name. Under the name. Under the name. Under the name. So before we explain this phrase, let's listen to some examples on how it is used in other situations, and then we'll come back and give you more information. My secretary made a reservation under my name. I'm sorry, sir. I don't have a reservation under that name. Do you have a reservation under the name Smith? All right, some really good examples there on how we could use this phrase in other situations. But just in case, let me explain it real fast. Under the name means that when you go to the restaurant or a hotel and you tell them your name, they know that you are the person that they have been expecting, they have been waiting. Yes. Well, I have chosen another useful phrase for you, and it is mix up. Mix up. Mix up. Mix up. There seems to be a mix up. Before we talk about this phrase, let's listen to some examples of how it is used. There was a mix-up at the airport and my bags were sent to Antarctica. I'm sorry, sir. There's been a terrible mix-up. We've given you the wrong baby. (laughs) 
Okay, that was useful and funny. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, the baby situation. Oh my god, imagine that happening. Yeah, I know. Well, guys, so a mix up is a confusion or a misunderstanding.、Mm -hmm. Exactly, well put. All right, Marco, what do you have for us? Okay, the next word that we should take a look at is overbooked. 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 What does that mean? So, if a hotel or a flight is overbooked, it means that they are full. They are more than full. Right. So, they cannot accept any more people. Exactly. Okay. Now,、uh, why is this phrase useful? Because it happens all the time. There are so many other situations where you can use this word or hear it from other. Native English speakers,、um, for example, a bus or a train can be overbooked. Exactly, that's really common. Okay, let's take a look at the last phrase for today, and that is complimentary upgrade. Complimentary upgrade. Complimentary upgrade. Complimentary upgrade. So this means that, for example, when、uh, the hotel is overbooked and all of their standard rooms are full, they will give you a better room, a more expensive room, but free. Yes, because it was not your fault. Right. This also happens sometimes if you're lucky on airplane flights. Yes. So if you are in economy class and an airplane, but for some reason it's overbooked, they will move you to business class or first class for free. I have a similar story, but I'm not going to tell you about it now. For now, let's go and listen to the dialogue one more time, and when we come back, we'll talk some more. Good afternoon. What can I do for you? I'd like to check in, please. I have a reservation under the name Anthony Roberts. All right,、uh, Roberts. Oh, Mr. Roberts, we've been expecting you, and here is your key card to the presidential suite. But there must be some mistake. My reservation was for a standard room. Are you sure? Let me double check. Yeah, here. This is my confirmation number. You're right, Mr. Roberts. There seems to be a mix-up. Unfortunately, we're overbooked at the moment. So.、Uh, not to worry.、Uh, we're pleased to offer you a, a complimentary upgrade. Woohoo! Presidential suite, baby. I love listening to this dialogue. It just—it's、uh, just so nice to see that someone is enjoying his upgrade so much, huh? Yeah, especially since he was expecting just a really normal room, and now he's gonna be treated like a king. So, Marco, have you ever gotten a complimentary upgrade? Yes, yes, I did. When I was traveling through India, I bought a normal seat in the train, but for some reason. The, it was overbooked, so I talked to the、um, station manager, and I got a complimentary upgrade to first class. I had a similar experience as well. I was flying from Shanghai to Qatar, and、uh, I actually had an economy seat, but for some reason they just upgraded me, and I was so happy. Oh, really? Like、yes. it wasn't overbooked?、Uh, well, I'm not sure because normally the night flight is not. That full, but they upgraded me for some reason, and、oh. I was so happy. It was an upgrade to first class. <laughs> wow, that's really cool. I,、yes. I would prefer a first class upgrade on an airplane. Yeah, any day. Well, you know what really amazed me was like the the food you get there. You know, you have a five course meal. Oh, really? Yes. And you get all the drinks you、y、can get, right? Exactly. Wow, that yeah, I would be really happy there. All right, everyone, we're out of time today, but be sure. To listen tomorrow because we'll be back again with another great podcast. And also, don't forget to go to our website at EnglishPod.com and leave us all your questions and comments in our community forum. Yes, and we would also appreciate your suggestions. And、um, I hope you enjoyed the lesson today. And Marco and I will be back tomorrow with another great lesson for you. But for now, it's bye. bye.
the English Pod audio review. Listen to the meaning, then say the vocabulary word. Check in. Under the name. Reservation. Confirmation. Mix up. Complimentary upgrade. Overbooked. Check out. Booking. Concierge. Deluxe room. Receipt. Let's try that faster. Booking. Mix up. Under the name. Reservation. Deluxe room. Overbooked. Check out. Receipt. Complimentary upgrade. Concierge. Check in. Confirmation. Now say the word and hear it in a sentence. Under the name. Under the name. Under the name. Confirmation. 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 Mix up. Mix up. Mix up. Overbooked. Overbooked. Overbooked.